Hey guys, Kiwi Sylvian, and this is where we left off in the Seduce Me To Demon Ward demo, and I have the full game, so. Oh, I have to start my timer, so. That was one thing. We left off with the big question How? At the sight of the boys. As the sight of the boys kept the demon's attention, a second terror opened above them, causing everyone to look up. Four women dropped down from the terror and somehow managed to fall into the arms of the incubi behind Sam. Ah! Whoa! Are you okay? That is... I love the... that they get their own lives, but my head can't accept it. I have my own head cannons. I can't. I'm sorry. I love these guys, but... My brain's just like... I have to try to split my brain, it seems. Why do I have a timer going if it's print clearly in what I'm looking at? Because I'm using a new software, because apparently both my exploit and a few others didn't want to record my mic. So it's like, okay, thanks, bye. Ah! I love her. She looks so cute. I gotcha! I gotcha! It's okay! Eric! She's cool, too. Love, I've got you! James! And I do love Iridessa. She is simply the cutest of them all. Whoa! Are you alright? I stared wide-eyed. Their wives came, too? I watched as the boys and the girls finally planted themselves on the ground before looking around. As Sam spotted me, however, his eyes widened in both surprise and anger. His gaze pinned itself to, in, in, yeah, pinned itself to Diana, who stood per protectively in front of me. And his eyes instantly became painted over in almost a harsh gold color. You're fucking dead. Um, Sam, Sam. Within a blink, si Sam and Diana vanished and reappeared against the wall behind me. As I turned to see what was happening, I gasped at the sight. Sam was pinning Diana into the stone wall, crushing her neck and almost and holding her high enough to that her feet were dangling above the floor. I warned you, bitch! I will tear you to shreds! Sam! Before I could move, however, the guard jabbed the blunt end of the spear into one of Sam's knees, causing Sam to release Diane and buckle to his knees. You mangy dog! Oh boy. The guard quickly twirled his spear around and thrust it forward to skewer Sam, but missed as Sam fell back and laid himself across the ground, glaring up at his attacker. Filled with an almost intent, terrifying rage, the guard stepped forward and went for another stab at Sam. Fortunately, Sam pushed the weapon away from him and directed it, it, directed it to the side, causing the blade to clang against the ground. The guard quickly pulled back and thrust his spear forward again, but it hit the floor again as Sam turned his body to the side. However, the guard wouldn't let Sam get up as he quickly continued to pull back and thrust his spear forward at, at Sam over and over, practically trapping him against the ground. I wanted to step in, but was too afraid of the blinding speed of which the guard would jam his spear at Sam. I didn't want to provoke him, in, I didn't want to, provoke him to stab me in a blind adrenaline rush. <coughs> I looked at Diana, seeing her coughing and holding her neck while gasping for air. Her hand was glowing soft purple, purple tint, as if she were healing her neck from Sam's attack. Everyone else, however, had backed up away from the fighting pair, not wanting to become collateral damage from either of their attacks. As Sam sat up, the guard retaliated with a lightning-fast response and kicked Sam back down, slamming the bottom of his foot into Sam's face to do so. However, before the guard could sa slam a spear down at on its target, Sam rolled out of the way and got up, on, got up on his hands in a spinning handstand. Holy shit, my mouth is really dry. <sighs> Much better. I had never seen him fight like this, even with malice. But Sam was still undoubtedly trained in combat, even when he didn't have the upper hand. Sam flipped onto his feet and faced against the guard in a martial arts defense stance before a sudden barrage of spear thrusts forced Sam to duck, lean, and dodge away from the guard. 
Unrelenting, the guard thrust his spear as fast as a machine gun shot towards him, no longer looking to aim precisely, but hoping to land at least one hit. <laughs> at one particularly hard thrust, the guard leaned his body into the attack, but only managed to miss Sam by mere centimeters. Sam tilted to the side and let the spear cross over his chest without making contact. I looked to Diana, hoping sh that she would call off her guard, but she continued to stare at the floor, recuperating from Sam's attack. Don't get involved, because Sam has anger issues right now. I didn't want to get involved. Sam and the guard seemed very determined to beat each other. Who knew what would happen if someone stepped in? I held my breath, watching as Sam continued to duck and dodge the barrage of sphere thrusts the guard threw at him. GET OUT OF MY WAY! Sam finally lunged forward, dodging the guard spear before slamming his fist into the guard's chest and knocking him back. Ah! Pesky mongrel! The guard retaliated by swinging his spear around and swiping at Sam, making him jump back. Enough! Before the guard could follow through with another attack, the large, a large snap echoed through the air, forcing everyone in the room, including me and Sam, to look and look over and see Diana glaring at her guard. Diana slowly stood up straight and pointed to th at the space beside her, ushering the guard to quickly run to it and turn back to face the rest of us. I used the opportunity to step in between Sam and Diana. Sam looked to me with eyes full of bloodlust, begging me silently to continue the fight. I glared back, trying to break through his rage to get him to calm down. He relented and gritted his teeth before nodding and looking at to Diana in regard. I'll forgive you for now, brute. Forgive me? What makes you think that the one who needs forgiving is me? I didn't do anything! Then why is she here then? Sam! Whoa. Mad James is mad. Sam and I turned to look at James, who was incredibly furious. By the looks of it, the others were as well. Look at her! Does she look like she's been hauled during chains? Um, I would like to point out that I kind of, kind of was, considering how you got into the demon world, you fall and stuff, you could be bruised or hurt. <sighs> anyway, Sam looked to me as I met his gaze in almost perfect sync. I was indeed fine. Diana didn't hurt me. In fact, it had been the opposite. She wanted to protect me and sent me home. Send me home. Look at Sam's eyes, however, melted in one of longing and relief when he finally absorbed my appearance. It was like watching a beast instantly calm at the sight of its master. Without giving me a moment to breathe, he rushed over and wrapped me in his arms, burying his face into my shoulders. Shoulder. Uh, Sam. I'm so happy you're safe. My heart melted as I heard him whisper in my ear. I gripped tight, gripped him tightly. Returning the close embrace, I'm thankful that I could feel the one I loved once again in my arms. Sam tightened his grip on me, nuzzling into my shoulder. Kiss him! I gently moved my head and kissed over his cheek and neck, wanting to show him my affection and relief that he was in my arms again. Sam shuddered slightly at the touch of my lips and planted his own loving kiss on my neck. I fought back a moan at the rush of pleasure I felt from his lips touching my skin, managing to hide it. At last, Sam and I slowly broke away from each other. Sam looked over to Diana with a softer expression, but nonetheless a serious one. Why is she here? Diana pressed her lips together. I could see a small form of hesitation in her eyes as she looked at Sam and quickly formulated her answer. Ask your father. I felt a burst of angry energy flash beside me at her answer, which drew my eyes to, drew my attention back to Sam. His body became wrapped in dark, a dark green aura as his eyes flashed gold once again. What did you say? Your father brought her here and placed a curse on her. She can't leave this world until she dies, or... Another flash of energy. The aura around Sam pulsated, almost crackling like lightning to around a swarm. Sam gritted his teeth, and I could tell rage was slowly taking over. I'm gonna kill that old fuck! Sam! I quickly placed my hand on his shoulder, knowing that he needed to calm down. We had a plan. He didn't need to be this angry right now. 
Sam looked over at me, calming down slightly at the sight of my worried face. We're gonna kill him, Sam. Calm down. The aura around Sam faded and began to dwindle. Yeah. The aura around Sam slowly began to dwindle and die out as the gold glow in his eyes faded. I let out a small sigh of relief as I felt the muscles in his shoulders react to my hand. As I looked down, Sam spoke up once again, his voice suddenly sounding drained from his sudden rage. You got a plan to kill him? Yes. We plan to kill him in one week's time. Sam's like, bitch. One week? <laughs> Where is this number coming from, Succubus? We need to fully prepare ourselves for the final stage, which I'm certain will only take a couple of days. We've pinned him into a corner. The Demon Lord will fall. That's rather bold to assume. She's right, though. We can prepare everything in that time frame. Right? And if he does the same and attacks us before then? I don't know why my no my mic's so freaking sensitive. He won't. But I watched as Diana walked over and cleared a table. Cleared the table of the materials they had gathered for the gate spell, revealing a physical map of the abyssal plains. She pointed to a spot on the map, a peninsula surrounded by water labeled as the Decayed Sea. We'll cast a barrier spell along the edge of the peninsula and around the castle. He and his army won't be able to move from that spot until we break it ourselves, which will be during the siege. Where would we get the energy needed for that kind of spell? We won't be using energy. The red blue demons in the room suddenly tensed up, staring at Diana in surprise. What is she going to do? My lady, you're not suggesting. The demon lord has shown how far he is willing to go to win this war. It's only fitting to show the extent we'll go to in response. As much as I agree with you, this seems a little rash. What are you guys talking about? Are they allowed to know? I plan to put a barrier curse around the Demon Lord's castle and army. It's temporary, so it won't need the blood of a thousand demons. But it will need the sacrifice of at least one demon life. And I assume you'll be sacrificing one of my soldiers. Is this our only option? There are other options, but they will most likely take a lot of energy to pull off. It just depends on what we want to do. If we want to do this immediately, then the Barrier Curse is indeed the best option. I'm not opposed to performing the curse. As rash as it is, it will make our lives easier in the long run. You expect me to hand over one of my men. My soldiers join the rebellion to kill the Demon Lord, not to get their throats slit before even seeing the final battle. It's wrong, but can we really afford to spend any more energy? Diana already spent a lot trying to send the human back. What is the other option? The rabbit woman in Perry moved towards the bath and pointed it at the we could form tall rock walls around the castle. Box him in. It will take a lot of our energy, but we can recover in that week period. And what will stop the Demon Lord from tearing down the walls? I can imbue the walls with holy magic. The Incubi and I looked at him, all of us equally surprised. A demon with holy magic? How? How the fuck did you get holy magic? You look and smell like a demon. The guard held up his rough hand, playing the beads around to jangle with a sun motion. I've had the ability to use holy magic ever since I was taken in by my lady's family. There's no doubt that I am a demon, but I can't recall how I gained this ability. How is holy magic different than demon magic? It's white magic. Unlike demon magic, holy magic isn't so finicky. 
Think of it as warding or dispelling magic. You can't bless air or anything that doesn't have physical form, but you can bless objects to fight back against other forms of magic. If the walls were blessed with holy magic, the Demon Lord wouldn't be able to escape until we released him. Why not just trap him forever? That's idiotic. He would still be a threat regardless. Holy magic doesn't last forever. And stone will crumble eventually. He's right. We wouldn't be able to keep the walls up forever. The situation became, became more and more complicated the more we discussed it. How are we going to go about this? We can't just sit around and debate this forever. The longer we wait, the more we risk him striking back at us. But is it worth killing someone to trap him? When we finally strike, we will lose hundreds if not thousands of soldiers anyway. What difference will it make to lose one more life on top of this? Soulless fuck. <laughs> Agree. We can still cage him in. but we had to choose one. From the look of it, no one wanted to speak up, so I felt the urge to say something. Maybe I would be the one who would determine everything. But which method would be the best choice? Curse. I say the curse. Everyone in the room looked at me in surprise when I finally spoke up. The demon lord had trapped me here with the blood of a thousand demons. It was only fair to trap him with the life of just one. Well, the curse worked with just one. One life. Yes. He won't be able to escape because of its dark magic. Are you sure this is the best choice? I can see Violet, like... Like becoming frustrated and showing it in her her speech. Yeah. That and she would be showing her anger in it too. A monster like him won't stop if we box him in. We have to ensure that he won't be able to do anything while we prepare to fight back. Everyone nodded, most in reluctance, while the others did with confidence. Diana, however, turned to the orc man with a stern face. As for your reluctance, Sir Brute, we won't be using one of your men. Say what? Well then, who would you use? At that moment, Diana smirked, sending a familiar shiver down her spine. For a split second, I swore I saw a flash of gold across her visible eye as she replied to Matthew. A little mongrel who had the nerve to electrocute me in my own castle. I stared. There was... There really wasn't it in the castle? However, my mind released the question to focus on Diana's smirk. Something was off about Diana and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. When I came to the demon lord, I'd barely recognized her and didn't accept her kindness. Now, as I was staring at her in that moment, I again recognized the woman who had attacked me in the human world. Diana shook her head before crossing her arms and looking directly at me. So, since you'll be here for a while, we might as well give you names that you can use to refer to everyone here. Oh, oh, are we, are we getting human names? Oh my word. Must we? <laughs> Diana rolled her eyes and gestured to each team and named them on the fly. For the sake of time, we'll use simple names. This is Rabbit, our magic advisor. Sergeant, commander of our armies. Shadow, leader of our assassins. And Fay, our nomadic force ambassador. Sergeant, I'm a commander, Succubus. Shouldn't my name be Commander? 
It's easier on the tongue, though, to say sergeant. My lady, what shall they call me? Miranda looked at Saddle for a moment before turning toward me as a look of seriousness emanated from her eyes. You may call him Saddle. He is my personal guard, and he is always by my side. Cerro seems to be surprised. But Cerro his true demon name? Why would she give me his true name? Are you sure? Call him only if your life depends on it. Do not abuse this permission. Her eyes seem to burn as she gazed the line, full of hard intent and warning. I mentally noted her seriousness as she ran ahead through her hair. Well, now that we have a plan and introductions are out of the way, I believe we can end this meeting. We have a lot to accomplish in one week. What about us? You don't expect us to sit around. Actually, I do. You all don't belong on the battlefield. Say what? Now listen. I will not take untrained and unarmed beings into a war zone. Hold on. Pixie Violet, like, snapping at this, like, getting... Into every little anger point in her brain. I interject, stepping forward and crossing my arms at Diane. She seriously wasn't going to make any of it stay back while well, she fought the Demon Lord, was she? We could fight too. Diana squinted at me, pressing her lips together in a fine line. However, I meant it what I said. We could fight too. You expect me to trust that you can fight in a war? Let me and my brothers train then. We're demons, for fuck's sake. We know how to fight. Aw, Sam, you're such a way with words. The boy stared at Diana as she turned her head towards Sam. He was right, though. They knew how to train, so they knew how to fight. If they fought with the Red Alien, there would be a better chance of winning this war. You all realize this is a war, correct? You can die here. Blah, blah, blah. We understand completely. We understand, too. You tell her, Twyla. I still... My brain is unable to accept this. I have, like... My head has a cannon, head cannon with Sam and Violet, which... That's awesome. And then there's, like... I don't know how to explain it. It's, like, sisters? So I wanted to mess around with, like... How they could all react differently, and th the sisters would be Allie, Hannah, Heidi, Gina, and Violet. So, and each sister was paired with a well, Incubi. Allie was with James. Heidi was with Eric. Sam with Violet, of course. Jenna with Matthew and. Gina with Damien, so, yeah. <clears throat> Diana could only stare at our group as we challenged her proclamation. I wrapped my hand around my fiance's arm, frightened at the idea of participating in the war, but knowing that we needed all the strength of the muster to finish off the Demon Lord. This is the only way I could go home. <sighs> Defeated, Diana sighed and rubbed her temples. Very well. I can't exactly keep you here like prisoners. So it will be up to you if you choose to train for battle. However, I highly suggest just staying here and allowing us to handle it. I nodded, as did the others. This is really happening. We are going to kill the Demon Lord, and we had one week to either prepare for war or wait it out. Diana turned toward me and looked at, down at my outfit. I had nearly forgotten I was still in my wedding dress until Diana pointed at my chest. Lumen infere, bellum tabescere. Serene. What? I stared at her, unsure of why she was speaking in Latin. Until I felt the fabric around my body shift and change. I quickly looked at I'm tied with food. I quickly looked down to see my wedding dress morph into an outfit that looked perfect for the demon world. 
white top shifted into a long-sleeved oversized tunic with a leather corset and vest, while the bottom part of the gown split and wrapped around my legs, forming dark leggings. My shoes stretched into long knee-high boots. Ooh, interesting outfit. I'll just have My knee! Ah! My knee! My knee! Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm good. I blushed, getting used to the feel of the outfit. Of course it was tight, but it was still something new all along with the rest of it. Sam looked me up and down, looked at me up and down, organizing white blushing like such a sunday. You look good. Thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to head for the Demon Lord's castle. Do you plan to shadow travel? No, I have another method. Don't worry, I'll be back by morning. Faye and nodded to them as they pressed their lips together in a tight line. Faye, please escort our guests to the remaining open rooms while I'm gone. All right. Set up. Yes, my lady. Cero walked toward Diana and yeah, walked toward Diana and followed her out. The other demons, however, looked toward us. I'll take you to your rooms then. Thank you. We truly appreciate it. Thanks, Faye. My mind for a moment wandered to Diana and remembered her almost evil smirk when we decided to perform it first. What was she planning to do? Hopefully nothing truly sadistic. The walk to our room became a silent journey. Sam and I held hands, but for some reason there was no there were no words to say between us. This entire situation sat in my mind and festered, plaguing my thoughts and causing me to remain speechless. All of this seemed so unreal and hard to imagine, let alone believe. How is this possible? I felt Sam gently squeeze my hand, causing me to look over at him. Was he feeling my anxiousness somehow? Hey, you sure you're alright? I have to go fix my pants, like me. 